Today, we're looking at alternative milks, and I'll take you through a few of my tips to get you the best results. Hey guys, I'm Luke and welcome back to the Artistic YouTube channel where we guide you through all things coffee. Now, so you don't miss out on any of our latest content, make sure you do like and subscribe and hit the bell and you'll be notified when we put up our latest video. Um, and if you've got a comment about today's topic, which is alternative milk and how you can get the best out of it, if you've got some tips, leave them in the comments below. We'd love to share um, this around and answer anything else that you may have. So, as I've said, Alternative milk, it is a bit different to your dairy, your full cream or your skim on how you actually will froth and the results that you can get. So I wanted to give you a couple of quick things that are gonna help you get the best results. First things first is read the packet. So there are some specific things that happen with alternative milks, whether it's a soy like this or an almond milk, you've got coconut, you've got oat, there's a whole assortment of different products. But essentially they are um, a, an organic material like a nut or something that has a very small percentage that makes up this one litre container. The rest of it is water and a lot of other thickeners and bits and pieces that basically come together to make a product that can be used for frothing. Now these brands are designed specific for latte art or for the barista community. So it's fantastic that they've got uh, products out there that can help you make a better product. If you're just popping down the supermarket and thinking that your local soy that goes on your cereal is going to be the right product for you when you froth, I don't think you'll get the same results. So try and look for a product that is designed for baristas and for frothing. Um, nice, silky, smooth milk. So when you take a look at Bonsoy, on the packaging it says best served at 50 to 60 degrees. So you don't want to overheat this up to 65 degrees, it will start to split and, and maybe cause a bit of a, um, uh, yeah, splitting basically with the acidity of the coffee. And that's pretty true with most alternative milks. You wanna keep the temperature down a little bit cooler. So if you're new to it, maybe start around 50 and then work your way up to 60 degrees and see which results you can get. On something like this almond milk, on the top it says shake well. And I can guarantee that giving these a really good shake is gonna get all of the emulsifiers and bits and pieces that have settled in the bottom because they are a UHT product. They've been hanging around for some time. It'll then be through the whole product. If you can, crack open the lid, get the uh, bit more air in there, and that'll get it to shake a little bit better um, because they are vacuum sealed and you can sometimes not get basically an air bubble moving around there to get them all shake, shaken up. Now. The other great tip is these are warm, they're off a shelf, and yes, that's how they may be delivered. Don't use them straight away. Because essentially, these are at room temperature. And that's about 20, maybe 22 degrees. And if you're trying to froth and then stop at 50 degrees or 60 degrees, you actually don't have a lot of um, time in terms of the temperature build up to be able to get the consistency that you're after. So, the number one tip is get it from the fridge and keep them cold. Here's a couple I prepared earlier. Now again, there's a lot of different brands out there for these products, but typically what we find is with soy, it tends to get froth quite easily. So you can get a whole, um, a huge amount of foam um, just by getting a really large um, hiss or a loud um, burst of steam if you get too aggressive with it. Where something like uh, an almond milk um, or these other oat milks and so on, they're a little bit thinner and you need to be a little bit more aggressive in the actual steam to get the volume that you need. So as with any milk, know how much you're going to pour into your jug, uh, how much you're going to start with and know where you want to end so you get the right amount of foam there and get it as quick as you can up to 40 degrees so that you can keep spinning it back. Because if we're going to be stopping at 50 or 60 degrees, you don't have that much as much time as you would with milk. So let's go and make a coffee on the soy first. As with anything, you've got to have a good espresso. Uh, if you've got a really high acidity kind of coffee, it doesn't work as well with alternative milks. Um, if you do have that light roast uh, acidic coffee, definitely look for a lower temperature like 50 degrees. So we're just gonna do uh, a little double ristretto. Again, give that little bit of a shake up. Okay. So we've got our shot pouring beautifully. 
Obviously purge to get the water out. We definitely don't want to add more water into an alternative milk. Nice, tiny little air bubbles there. And now I've got enough foam and I've got the temperature I'm after. It's warm, I can still hold that because it is quite a cool temperature. It didn't get so hot, that's one indicator. If you watched our last video about how to froth without a thermometer, if you can still hold that, you know you haven't got too, too hot on that product. Let your milk sit, or your alternative dairy products sit. Um, it will then bring all those bubbles to the top. And you can see here, we do have a couple of bigger bubbles, which are a bit of a high speed product uh, that happen. But if we do just tap those out, then give it a swirl, you can see it does come back nice and glossy. Now, give your espresso a good swirl as well. And get that foam in and really start to blend it up. And then you should be able to do your little pretty patterns. Now just start off with something easy like a heart or a tulip. And you'll start to see, if you look closely at a pattern like that, there is a tiny little bit, you can see these little dots, of where it is starting to, to separate or, you know, it's not congealing, which can be really bad when it super splits, but there is a bit of a reaction happening there. Now, if you found that no matter what you did with the coffee that you've got at home and the milk you've got, it kept getting uh, a bit splitty, I just put two or three grains of sugar into that espresso shot, give it a quick little dissolve. It's not enough to really make it a sweet tasting coffee, but you're going to start to change that acidity level uh, of that and it will help as well. So let's go and use the almond milk. So let's make that almond milk. Get our shot on. So again, the same double ristretto in the latte glass there. Bit of air in there so that allows us to really get it mixed up nicely. So it was really easy to get that amount of foam that I wanted from that soy milk. What I do find with the almond, it is a little bit trickier. You do have to be very precise. If you make a mistake when you're frothing here, it will really affect the soy, but being on an almond milk, or an oat, you tend to be a little bit more forgiving on those. So that's come up really nice. Constant little hiss is the key there. Again, let your alternative milk sit, just as we do with other ones. Our espresso is ready. Tap out a little bubble that might be on the top. Give a bit of a swirl. The sweetness sort of comes out first, so that does help come up to the crema. Again, tap out our milk. Give it a bit of a swirl. And get that sweetness in, get around the cup. There you go. So that almond milk has actually performed a lot nicer. It hasn't split, uh, well not split, but just started to separate a little bit like that soy. And it's really easy to see when you look at them side by side that different products do behave differently. So even though this is what we regard as one of the best soys on the market, the, the bon soy, um, at the same temperatures, basically, um, you can see that the almond is actually holding up really well. So if you look at the amount of um, foam that's in there, they're identical on those two lattes. And typical of soy, you can see that it does look a little bit, oh, I guess, separated or, or congealy there a tad. But essentially the same espresso shots with two different milks, and we can still pour latte out. So when we look at these two coffees, we've also got to consider how much we have left over. So we don't want to over froth um, basically alternative milks. Uh, it will really change the amount of foam we get and the texture that we're going to end up with. So I did have a little bit left over there. So next time I would have um, hopefully started a little bit lower. That's the soy and that's the almond there. Um, and just trying to get the right amount to start with and froth only what I need. And that's going to give us a much better um, end result. Now, one hot tip, if you're really struggling and if you've got a soy that no matter what you do, it just keeps splitting, I'm gonna give you one little hack. And what is it? Well, I usually find it's with soy. So let me just start with a clean, fresh jug. Always with any alternative milk, clean, fresh jug. So 
if no matter what you do, temperature, a little bit of sugar, um, and it just keeps splitting, but you do enjoy the taste of that particular uh, alternative milk or soy that you've got. There's two little hacks that you can do. You get your espresso. Now, the first hack is to, before you froth this, actually add just a dash of your alternative milk into your espresso. And it seems to counteract the acidity or the reaction that's gonna take place in that actual uh, alternative milk once it's heated. So, I've seen this done uh, quite a few times and I've done it myself, and it has worked with particular coffees and particular milks. So, give that one a go. If that doesn't fix it, and I only say this because if you really want to enjoy that particular flavour of alternative milk and that particular espresso and that tip of that cold bit didn't work, add your espresso to your alternative milk. You've got a slight little coating on your glass. Then give it a froth. Because it's totally combined, it's not going to split. You can pick the temperature that you're after. You've basically taken away that whole reaction of, of how it would, would separate or split. If you've got a little bit of espresso there, you may be able to basically get your uh, little pattern. No, look, there wasn't quite enough there, but essentially this is the same thing. It's just that there's not going to be the pretty pattern on the top. You can see that it is silky. It's nice and smooth there, and it's going to settle. Actually, there is a faint little heart, if you can see that. There you go. It hasn't split. The espresso's in there. It's still exactly the same coffee. It just doesn't look the same. So hopefully, guys, that gives you a couple of really cool tips to be able to make beautiful silky um, milk and, and foam for latte art and get you practicing. Now, if you've got any other tips out there, I'd love to hear them. Put them in the comments below. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I hope this helps you with your alternative milk. Have an awesome day. We'll catch you next time.